As a child, I was taught to internalize grief. You are allowed to carry sludge, yes, but please, sir, bleach, disinfect, and flush. And so, Ramzi, when you passed on, I reacted to your death in the same way I had reacted to the myriad of family deaths that came before you. And I apologize for that. I'm asleep on the couch in the living room because I hate the sticky stuffiness of my sahel room. I wake up at 7 a.m. to my mom on the phone with yours. Her breaking, creasing face producing stolid, cubic sentences of pre-packed comfort and support. And my groggy, jumbled state, I know. To tell you the truth, I feel relief for you, for your family, and for us. But for you the most, Bububi. Just last night, to a backdrop of twinkling Eid lights and sounds, my mom and I get a moment to ourselves and she attempts to broach the subject of you. Do you think it's the end? I avoid it. I am Daisy Buchanan with sleek blonde hair and the stoic, exhausted face of evasion and ambivalence. Oh, let's have fun, it's too hot to fuss. Flap, flap. Truth be told, Ramzi, I did know it was the end. I had more than an inkling of what was coming, but I let myself process it. And in processing it, I processed you. I slowly let you disintegrate. I let you go while you still breathed and laughed and screamed and called me a homar. In the first year of med school in a dragging lecture, I hear about a rare disease, the leash nyan syndrome, a vaguely interesting three-line paragraph that is buried between heaps of terms and random syndromes with difficult eponymous names. I read and reread these three lines. I read and reread them and they seem familiar. They feel close and I suddenly see you. A recognition that is weighed down by the heavy comprehension of the inevitable brevity of your life. I Google you and I grieve for you and I understand you. I see your knot fingers, your chewed up lips, your arm jerks. I see what I was conditioned to brush up on and ignore. I see you starkly. These define you as much as your laugh and jokes and sly comments. These define you as much as the soft, matted black hair that makes us all jealous. And the dark eyes that relay a knowledge that is beyond us. Your eyes that show a deep defiance. A soul that jaunts and jolts and pokes fun at its sisters. One that perceives its transitory state. A soul that roars, I am here. I am not just my nod fingers, my chewed up lips, my arm jerks, my wheelchair. I am here, ya tante, ya rabia, ya tante who thinks you can reduce me to a disabled case, you and your fat, ignorant sympathy, your pouty rouged lips and your mischievous Obra children and their pointy fingers. I am a person, I am here and I like eating Sad al Hanak and Zabedi and I sleep late, I joke, I laugh, I whine, I fuss. I Google you and I grieve for you, and I will never understand you. And so, when my mom hangs up and looks at me with a face that's trying not to fall apart, but whose horror-stricken eyes betray it, I feel relief. What I have been dreading for years has finally happened. You have been released. I feel unperturbed, a uh, mixture of denial and resignation. I stand up, I call your sisters, I pack in five minutes. I apologize. I have attempted to boil you down to an abstract memory. Did it happen? Was I there? Did you ever really exist? I apologize. Your life was not abstract. Your soul was not abstract. You, as Kerouac would put it, burn, burn, burn like fabulous yellow Roman candles exploding like spiders across the stars. And in the middle, you see this blue center light pop and everybody goes, ah. Oh. But the pop is a thunderous atomizing bang and the ahs are doubled over gasps for breath. 
you burn months after you have passed away. A force that sends us reeling like little passive molecules in a centrifuge, resigning, resignedly giving in to an ascension, a cleavage from all that is base and carnal and disappointing, the sludge of our lives.